r slash ask reddit what survival tips should you never use reddit, reddit. you should never make finding food your first priority you're gonna need water and protection from weather and wildlife first you should never make finding three minutes without air three days without water and three weeks without food will kill you first though some people these days are rather chunky and could go probably go three months without food one second without hope brendan rogers don't put butter on a burn. Put the burn part under cold running water. This is not if the burns are really serious, of course. Only put butter on the serious burns, got it. Hi, nurse here. Don't put your burn under cold what water. You increase the chance of use. getting hypothermia and you will get the state of shock. Rinse your burn under lukewarm water instead for about 10 to 15 minutes. Do not remove clothing from your burn. You will damage your skin more. Leave this up to a medic. However, if you have a chemical burn, you should rinse for about 45 minutes in lukewarm water. A chemical burn is the only burn which requires you to remove the clothing from the burn. If you are being chased and need to change your appearance, do not rub walls on your face. Yeah, it will work and you will get away, but it will really hurt. Oh, but that goes my plans for today. Oh. Keeping someone awake if they have a concussion? If they are sleepy after a head injury, get them to a hospital right the f away. But you don't need to keep them awake. Among a few other things, trying to keep them awake is likely to make them and you panic, which is always more harmful. Well, the belief is that keeping them awake prevents them from succumbing and dying due to the injury. It's mostly false. If you have a concussion or brain bleed, keeping them awake won't really do anything to stop or slow down the damage. You might get better without a doctor or you might not. You just need a doctor. But being unconscious, not just sleeping, does carry a separate risk of accidental positioning in a way that inhibits breathing. Or they may aspirate their own vomit. When you see a bear, never pretend to be dead. The bear will most likely start eating you alive. Be noisy. The bear will go away. If he still attacks, make yourself big, maybe with a backpack, and scream. The bear could get scared and go away. And you're screaming for help at that point. If he bites, punch him on the snout or in or around the eye. Bear is brown. Lay down, bear is black. Fight back, bear is white. Good night. I'm curious. Do you know why the approach to these types of bears are different? What makes the bear so that they require different ways for you to fight slash escape them? Black bears are the ones that will most likely attack out of random curiosity or random anger, but are super cowardly. If you make a lot of noise or make yourself seem more threatening than they want you to be, they'll run away. Brown bears generally are not too aggressive normally. If you are attacked by one, it's likely a female brown bear that has cubs nearby. Your job here is to make yourself seem like less of a threat. This is where you play death. Even while doing that, make sure to cover your neck and lay in a position that protects any vitals just in case. Polar bears are active carnivores living in a frigid wasteland. They don't give a f You act more aggressive to scare it away? Nah, polar bear don't care. It knows it is bigger and it will call your bluff. Try to make yourself seem like less of a threat? Score! Easy meal! Try to outrun it, it'll catch you. Try to fight back, it will beat you. I've heard, don't try zigzagging to get away from an alligator. They don't change direction quickly, so they'll just follow your general path and beat you to the nearest tree. Don't climb trees either. They'll go right up after you. I've lived in Florida all my life, and I've seen exactly three alligators sort of in trees before. Are you confusing trees with grass? He's in Florida. He's probably confusing it with meth. Stop, drop, and roll. When on fire, it's not gonna do much. If you are set on fire with an oil or accelerant, it's just going to prolong the burning. What should you do then? Not get covered in oil and accelerants. Best advice on this trend. Thank you. Using alcohol, particularly drinking alcohol to disinfect wounds. So many shows have characters using drinking alcohol to disinfect all manner of wounds from small to large. Looking at loss, there was no reason that that wound couldn't have been bandaged until they found a fresh water source. You shouldn't use high proof alcohol, including isopapil on wounds, because it kills living tissues and washes away clotting agents. 
It also can cause inflammation and irritation later that can mask or mimic infection. Sterilize some water or use bottled water that is already clean and use running water and gentle soap if you have some to clean it out. If you have no access to water in a survival situation, that's actually a bigger priority than fixing up the wound permanently. Get it to stop bleeding and find water. And I hate to have to add this part, but I feel the need to. If you get a bad enough cut where you're trying to figure out poor man's first aid and where it needs more irrigation and you can get to a hospital, go to the hospital. Your camping trip and reputation as a rough rider are not worth a staff infection. The above tips are for any wounds in a situation where you can get to civilization easily or minor wounds on camping trip and the like. Travel by night during the zombie apocalypse. First of all, I get spooked easily and I get extra spooked at night. So for me, an easy spooker to travel at night when all the spoken is not kosher, I'd rather travel during the day and be extra quiet and try my luck. Traveling by night is honestly a bad idea in general unless you have non-obvious ways to increase one's own situation awareness in the dark. With daylight, they may be more able to see you, but you'll be more able to see them as well. You either travel blind and make a ton of noise bumping into sh or you use a flashlight that is basically a spotlight on your exact position. Lose, lose. If you're lost, never drink untreated water from a creek. Waterborne illness take three to five days to incubate. You could die from dehydration in an afternoon. Go ahead and drink up. At least you'll survive long enough to get sick. And waterborne illness are almost never fatal in adults. You are not going to catch cholera from a wilderness stream. If you have a way to boil or filter water, obviously you should. And it's worth hunting around a little bit to find a cleaner water source. The closer to the spring, the safer it will be generally. Lots of people drink untreated spring water on purpose. Hmm. Well, right. If you're going to be lost for a few days or weeks, then gyrrhea diarrhea will dehydrate you too. These diseases aren't usually fatal because people usually get them camping. Being lost indefinitely is a whole different beast. People should keep both possibilities in mind when weighing their decisions. I mean, water is easy to sterilize. No reason to risk dryadia if you don't have to. But yes, if it comes to drink creek water or have no water, drink the water. I have had the privilege to work with a few ex-con and the best advice I've heard about surviving is to be a genuinely nice person. But if someone starts shit with you, books, anything that's not prison. Don't gamble unless you have what you're betting on you and are willing to part ways with it. Don't start but if someone starts shit with you, don't back down, unless you want to be an easy target. Most of the time, it's people testing you, and sometimes you gotta square up. Taking a licking earns you more respect than backing down. Just live by the golden rule and you should be okay. My golden rule is to not go to prison. Do not remove a knife after you've been stabbed. It's probably keeping major blood vessels blocked off and removing it will amplify the bleeding. Leave it to the doctors. Almost anything you hear from Bear Growls, the man's a tube. My favorite was when he was surviving the Sahara Desert and talking about needing to find food while he was sitting in a patch of prickly pear. They served that in restaurants. To try to punch a shark in the nose, that ain't ever gonna work. You're just going to end up sticking your hand in its mouth. Claw at the gills instead. Friendly reminder, shark skin is very rough. Dolphins are smooth. This is true. Many people every year are attacked by a shark when it brushes by them. Their skin is like sandpaper. Don't do the follow a river dance stream to find people thing unless you know the area and the river. Plenty of rivers end in the middle of nowhere and you never know how far you'll have to walk to find civilization. If you're by a river, you have water. Stay where you are until people find you. A small search area is much better than odds for getting out. Same goes for power lines. Obviously, we'll eventually go to civilization, but that could be hundreds of miles and may cross terrains that is impossible to cross. Just cut down or destroy those power lines. Someone will come fix them pretty soon. 
This was an actual survival tactic out in the old American West and in Australia. Break a telegraph line and then wait. Of course the telegraph company would dispatch a crew to fix the line, then rescue you. So it was in your best interest to make it really, really easy to fix, not trash the whole thing. If you are highly allergic to poison ivy, don't burn it as a means to get rid of it. Inhaling the smoke can cause your throat to swell, resulting in an untimely death. Regardless of how sensitive you are to poison ivy, poison oak, or poison sumac, never, ever burn it. If you inhale it, you can get the rash in your throat, trachea, and lungs. It can also start swelling and cause suffocation. Don't know if this counts, but never wait 24 hours to report a missing person. If you think somebody's missing, it's better to call the police sooner than later. Waiting will lower the chance of the victim's survival. Yes, the US is actually really great because you can report someone missing at any time. In other countries, a certain amount of time has to pass, but I've seen tons of cases in which the person was missing for only 20 minutes. Their family slash friends reporting them missing and could save their lives like that. Canada, you can report at any time as well. Don't use moss as a compass. There's a myth that moss will always grow to a specific direction. Some say north, facing sun, away from it, etc. But the vast majority of moss grows wherever the f it wants. Actually, a lot of factors affect how the moss grows. Do not assume that water is clean based on clarity, bacteria, protozoa, and parasites are microscopic and can only be disinfected by boiling the water, pasteurizing it, or using an approved water disinfectant like iodine. The only water you don't really have to disinfect is water seeping through naturally formed stonework like limestone, underground water tables that have a very low risk of being contaminated, and water derived from plants like tropical vines, banana trees, or similar life that tend to be contaminant free in their natural state. The frog is pleased. Thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe for more. Like.